Good morning, biochemistry. So today, I want to talk to you about serine proteases. This is one serine protease. That's why the S isn't on there. All right, now ACE. Whenever you say ACE, that means ah, to cut. Think like ACE of cards, and someone's throwing the ACE at you, and they're going to cut you off. And if you watch Hunter x Hunter, maybe it's, uh, it's the one weird clown guy. Um, anyways, yeah, so these are proteases, so we're going to cut proton, a protein. So what happens with the protein is you have a carbon, and it's going to be double bonded to an oxygen, and then it's going to have an R group over here. That's the rest of the protein. We're not worried about that. We're really only concerned about this bond right here. And the reason we're concerned about this bond is this is the peptide bond. This is what forms proteins. This is when you have an amino acid. If you're carboxyl, then you're amino, and then you lose water, and they form a bond. It's a peptide bond. You can make shirts out of this, plastics, whatever you want. You can make a lot of things out of this. It's kind of cool. But it's also an activist. It's a site where things can happen. All right, and that's very important. That's what we're going to deal with today. So what we have is we have serine, histidine, and aspartate. And all serine proteases have this as their active site. Okay, it's a serine, histidine, and serine's neutral. It's got a hydroxyl group. Okay, it's got a water there. Histidine's basic, and aspartate or aspartic acid, depending on, on what form it's in. Uh, it's going to be. It's the weird one with the, the one-letter symbol of D, because aspartic acid. The D there is an easy trick to remember that if you're looking for one. Um, and so what happens here is this negative charge on this oxygen, keep in mind these are in resonance. This is actually half a negative charge, but still it's, it's a bit of a negative charge. He's not particularly happy. So what does he do? He sees this partially positive hydrogen here and he forms a pretty strong hydrogen bond. And what he's doing is he's pulling in this electron density, okay? Instead of thinking about like this bond as being a thing, think about this as like positive centers and then there's these wave functions where the electrons are just trying to get to the lowest possible energy, energy site and so maybe this electron is going to go all the way over here. It happens, all right? And it's, it's, think about it as like a weird wave function. So then what happens is this guy ends up being a little bit different. He's like, huh, I'm not so happy now, you know, I mean, cause may, or maybe these electrons go over here and this guy ends up being a little bit negative as a result of that. Like if you take away the positive charge, you know, you're gonna make it a little bit more negative and, and just things move around and it's it's all about, you know, just possible situations and what results of this. So what happens here is this nitrogen comes in and he takes that hydrogen, okay? And he's like, I want you, okay? So now, now we're gonna have a positive charge here and he's gonna have a hydrogen and this guy's gonna be negative, all right? Now we have a negative oxyanion, uh, all right, and he's like not super happy, all right, he's kind of okay because he's in resonance and he's got enough electron density, but he's not happy, so what he does is he attacks this carbon, okay, and this causes some pretty big changes because now we have one, two, all oh, those electrons need to go up, three, and four. So this carbon is now a tetrahedral carbon, which is okay with carbon can form four bonds. But there's this negative charge here, which is in a place called the oxy anion hole. All right, it's a stabilization, and this lowers the activation energy so that you're not end up getting this, this oxygen at super high of a level. So now what happens is that this guy's positive, right? And he's not super happy, but this guy's pretty happy, and he's not. So what happens here is this nitrogen takes that hydrogen, okay? Actually, I don't know if I necessarily want to use those, so I'm actually going to change. I'm going to use these electrons to do it. So he's going to come up, and he's going to take that hydrogen, all right, with those two electrons. And then this guy is going to come down. Now what we've formed... Wait a minute. Oh, no. Did that wrong. This nitrogen is actually going to attack this nitrogen. Is that right? No. No, no. That was wrong. <laughs> this nitrogen is going to attack this hydrogen, all right? And he's going to go back on there and he's going to be happy. So now what we've formed, double bond there. Carbon's got four bonds, no charge, no charge, no charge. And this nitrogen, ah, also has two hydrogen. He's no charge, so he's happy. So actually, this is where the nitrogen's gone. We've now removed this amino acid. So let's say this is glutamate. Glutamate can then be deaminated again and go join the TCA cycles alpha ketoglutarate, or that ammonia group can, can join with bicarbonate and a proton and become carbon monophosphate. Well, what happens now is we have a new, so this guy's gone, okay? Whew. 
that took me a little bit long to think through. Longer than I would like to admit. Okay, so this guy here now has a covalent bond. Okay, so what are we going to do? Are, are the rest of our proteins stuck to the serine protease? Serine protease is no longer useful. So what happens now is water comes along because it's, it's, it's in biological conditions, right? So we have water, H, O, H. And it's, it's kind of this weird step is this nitrogen takes that proton. This oxygen attacks that carbon. This goes up. We form da, 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 our intermediate here. Nitrogen bonded to hydrogen, carbon bonded to oxygen bonded to hydrogen, and then we have this guy still in the oxanion hole. But now, what do you know? This can come down. This oxygen can attack that guy, and then what do you know? We reform, and we're gonna have carbon double bonded oxygen with an O and H. So our group is still intact. So this guy's gone. Do, 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 do. That nitrogen goes back to being neutral, which is what he wants to be, because it's his dream is to be neutral. Nobody wants to have a charge. And this guy went back to being what he was before. And we have reformed the active side. Okay, so another thing I want to talk to you about a little really quickly is this area where it takes place is called the S1 pocket. Okay, and based on the size of S1 pocket, you're going to get different proteins and different proteases. And so that's where, um, you know, if your body has a certain need of a certain of a certain amino acid, it is, or if it just it's time for the protein to be degraded, these are important. Um, all the proteins in your body are made to be broken down. Okay, even your skin, you know, collagen lasts what, three months maybe. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Sorry for that mistake in the middle, but I, I actually I think it helps you learn because you're like, oh yeah, you can kind of think about it as like with the hydrogen going this way. And then you're like, no, it's not what actually happens because if you were the nitrogen were to attack that nitrogen, then you'd have a covalent bond here that would also need to be broken. And, and maybe it does happen uh, and water acts as an intermediate to release that. But the mechanism that most, most uh, people who really know what they're talking about accept is the one that I ended up going with today. So anyways, um, have a good day, Biochem.